Good morning, grade 6 learners. I welcome you to another Science Theoretic episode here in Valenzuela FB Live. How are you, grade 6? We are now down to the last two episodes of our Valenzuela Live in Science 6. Are you excited for your upcoming moving up ceremony? I am excited as well. But before thinking of your moving up ceremony, let us first fill your brain with knowledge and understanding about solar system as we explore the different planets today. Are you ready for another amazing learnings today? That's great! So before we start, let me remind again everyone to obey the following rules. First, don't forget to type your name followed by the name of your school in the comment box below. This will serve as your attendance and means in order to acknowledge your presence in today's session. Again, type your name and the name of your school in the comment box below. Second, if you want to participate in today's discussion by answering my questions, feel free to use the comment box. If you also have questions in mind that you want to clarify, you may type your question below and I'll try my best to answer it later. So our today's lesson is based on the most essential learning competencies in Science 6. Compare the planets of the solar system. So at the end of this session, you learners must be able to define planets and describe the characteristics of different planets. Have you ever wondered how big and how wide the place that we live in? Have you ever asked yourself the questions, why the sky is blue? How come that we can breathe? What if there is no land and there's only water here on the planet that we are living? Is it still possible to have life? These are just some questions that may run in our mind at some point of our life when we try to question the place that we live in. And as we discuss and dig deeper onto the different planets in our solar system, for sure that we would all appreciate the perfectness of our own planet, Earth. So have you ever wondered how planets were discovered? Long time ago, five planets were known to people. They are bright enough to be seen with the naked eye and they move with respect to the stars. The Greek called this planet, which means to wonder. People from other places have their own names for these planets, but the names we use come from the ancient Greeks and Romans. They named the first five planets for some of their gods. Mercury, the Roman god of Comens and Cuny. Venus, the goddess of love. Mars, the god of war. Jupiter was the chief god. And Saturn was the god of agriculture. Five planets were already named. And... We are still missing three. Can you name the remaining three planets? Type it in our comment box. So before revealing all the planets in our solar system, let us first know how planets can be considered as planets. So here are the general characteristics of planets. First, it is massive. It is spherical. It has atmosphere, and it revolves around the sun. It shines by reflected light, and it has no light of its own. If a certain object has these general characteristics, it can be considered planets. Major planets in our solar system can be classified into two. The inner planet also known as the terrestrial planet because they are solid, rock-like, and dense. 
And what are the planets that can be considered as terrestrial planets? These are the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The second classification of planets is the gaseous or Jovian planets. These planets are made almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. And these planets do not have solid surfaces. So the planets under this Jovian planets are the Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now that we all know these major planets in our solar system, are you now ready to explore this planet? I am ready too, so let's begin. The closest planet to the sun is the planet Mercury. It is the innermost and the smallest planet of the solar system with just 5% of the Earth's mass. It appears as a morning or evening star from the Earth. But due to its proximity to the sun, it is very hard to see. But still, Mercury can be observed at least twice a year. Evening star when the sun has set and morning star when the sun will rise. Because Mercury has almost no atmosphere, its temperature can reach up to 467 degrees Celsius and has a very low temperature reaching as low as negative 187 because it cannot retain the heat it absorbs. It is covered with completely dry craters that were formed by rocks falling from the space. There is no moon nor any satellite revolving around it. Now, can you guess the next planet after the planet Mercury? Very good. It's Venus. Venus is considered as the Earth's twin sister as it is, as it is almost as big as Earth. Though it is Earth's twin sister, its volcanic surface and extremely hot and dense atmosphere makes it one of the most inhospitable places in the solar system. It is considered as the hottest planet because the heat from the sun cannot escape through the thick clouds of sulfuric acid and layers of carbon dioxide. Venus is one of the brightest objects in our night sky, second only to the moon. It appears as either an evening star or a morning star. Now, next to Venus is our favorite planet. Can you guess what is it? Of course, it is our very own planet, the planet Earth. Our home world is the densest of the eight planets in the solar system. It is also the largest among the four terrestrial planets. It has only one known satellite, known as the moon or Luna. As we know, it has blue enough supply of water and brown and green land masses where plants can grow and produce food. It has big and small bodies of water that all living things need. It has also ozone layer that serve as protection from the harmful rays of the sun. Its location on the solar system is so perfect that we only receive enough heat from the sun that makes life possible. Because of these characteristics, it is the only planet known to support life as of now. As we know, explorations of other habitable planets are still ongoing. Next to Earth is another Earth-like planet, which is the fourth planet in our solar system, the Mars. 
Mars is the second smallest planet in the solar system and known as the rusty planet because of its reddish appearance. Its reddish patches are caused by iron oxide, a mineral that is found on the surface of Mars. It is said to be Earth-like because of its similarities to Earth, like its rocky surface and polar ice cap. Mars is covered with craters caused by falling rocks that heat the planet. And did you know that it has the highest mountain? It is called the Olympus Mons. It is 24 kilometers in height, which is equivalent to three Mount Everest. And this is where also the largest canyon can be found. It is the Valles Marineris, which is four times longer, five times deeper, and 20 times wider than the Grand Canyon. Mars has two natural satellites the Phobos and Deimos, that orbit very close to the planet. It has been predicted that in about 50 million years, Phobos will either crash into Mars' surface or break up into ring structure around the planet. There is an ongoing exploration on this planet. It is the Perseverance rover. And it was landed last February 18, 2021. It is designed to look for signs of past and present life and see if human could one day explore Mars. So aside from Perseverance, there are still four more rovers on Mars right now. These are the Sojourner, Spirit and Opportunity, and Curiosity. So the first four planets are the terrestrial planets. The succeeding planet is now considered as the Zobian planet. So next to Mars is the king of the solar system, as it is the largest planet in the solar system. Can you name the planet? Yes, it's the Jupiter. And how big is the Jupiter? If you combine all the planets in the solar system, Jupiter's mass is still 2.5 greater than all those planets combined. Jupiter spins on its axis faster than any other planet. Because of this rotation, Jupiter's atmosphere is subject to high winds which cause the atmosphere to form distinct bands of color like swirling vortices and gigantic anticyclonic storms. Jupiter's atmosphere is covered with mostly hydrogen and helium clouds. One of the distinct characteristics of this planet is its great red spot. It is said to be a huge spinning storm just like a strong typhoon and hurricane. And do you have any idea how big it is? Great Red Spot is about three times Earth's diameter. That's how big it is. The planet Jupiter has a total of 79 identified moons. The four largest are the Galilean moons named after the discoverer of the first moon of Jupiter, Galileo Galilei. We have the Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system with diameter greater than that of the planet Mercury. Jupiter is the fourth brightest object in our skies after the sun, moon, and Venus. Now, after the planet Jupiter is the ring planet. What is the name of this planet? It's the Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet 
but it is the least dense among all planets in the solar system. While the other gas giants also have ring systems, Saturn is larger and more visible than any other in the solar system. The rings are composed of water ice crystals and smaller amount of rock, ranging in size from specks of dust up to a few particles as large as mountains. Saturn has at least 150 moons and moonlets. The precise figure is uncertain as it is difficult to draw a distinction between a large ring particle and a tiny moon. Titan, Atlas, and Calypso are some of the confirmed moons of Saturn. Uranus is the seventh planet and the third largest of the solar system's gas giants. It is the coldest planet in the solar system. It is the first planet to be discovered with the use of modern telescope by English astronomer William Herschel in 1781. It has 27 moons. Some of them are named Miranda, Ariel, and Titanic. It, it, is, uh, it has an HL tilt of 97.77. It is bluish green in color because methane absorbs the red and yellow light and the clouds reflect green and blue. Next is the planet Neptune. Neptune is the eighth planet and officially the farthest planet from the sun. It is the smallest but also the densest gas giant. Neptune was the first planet to be discovered purely based on mathematical prediction rather than direct observation. Since it discovered in 1846, Neptune has completed only one orbit of the sun. Its atmosphere is covered with methane gas that gives the planet, planet bluish green color. It has also a dark colored storm called the Great Dark Storm. Because of its distance from the sun, it is regarded as an ice giant. Neptune has 13 moons. One of its moons is Triton. It is the most unusual moon because it orbits Neptune in the opposite direction. So now we got too much learning in our discussion today. So let us again recall the concepts and planets that we had learned. The solar system is made up of sun and everything that orbits around it, including planets, moons, asteroids, comets, and meteoroids. The sun is the center of solar system and eight major planets are revolving around it. The first four planets are known as the terrestrial planets and the last four are known as the Jovian planets or the gas giants. Mercury is the first planet and the smallest in the solar system. Venus, which is considered as the Earth's twin because of its size, but it is not as friendly as Earth as life here is not possible. Third planet is our home planet, Earth, with the perfect combination of land, water, heat, and atmosphere that can sustain life. Fourth planet in our solar system is the Mars. It is red in color because of the presence of iron oxide which can be found on its surface. It is th the top candidate for other planets where life can exist. That's why rovers are being sent here to study more of this planet. 
fifth planet is the king of the solar system, Jupiter. It is covered with mostly hydrogen and helium gas. It has great red spot, which is a spinning storm, which is as big as three Earths. Sixth planet in our solar system is the ring planet, the Saturn. It is the second largest but the least dense among all planets. Its rings are made up of ice particles. Seventh planet is the Uranus and the eighth planet is the Neptune. They are the least explored planets. The size, mass, comp composition, and rotation of Uranus and Neptune are in fact so similar that they are often called planetary twins. So if you want to memorize the position of the planets, just remember this phrase. My very educated mother just serve us noodles. Just get the first letter of each word and you'll get to remember the arrangement of planets. So everybody, let us repeat the phrase. My very educated mother just serve us noodles. Very good, grade 6. I can see that you learned so much today. That's why I prepared few questions here to check your understanding in today's lesson. So let us just identify which planet is being described in each sentence. Remember the eight planets that we discussed? Very good. So, are you ready? Let's begin. First one. It is considered as the king of solar system because it is the biggest planet in the solar system. What is that planet? So, if your answer is Jupiter... You are correct. Next, it is the planet closest to the sun and the smallest planet in our solar system. What is it? Type your answers. So the answer for this question is Mercury. Very good. Third question. Since it was discovered, this planet only revolves around the sun once. What planet is this? If your answer is Neptune, very good. Next, this is the Earth's twin planet. But unlike on Earth, this is one of the most unhospitable or inhabitable terrestrial planets because of its atmosphere and temperature. So what do you call to this planet? Very good, it's Venus. And lastly, it is the sixth planet with very visible rings around it. It is the second to the largest planet in our solar system. So what do you call to this planet? Very good. The answer is Saturn. Job well done, grade 6. All right. I know you still have questions in mind that you want to ask. Feel free to type your questions in the comment box. I will be waiting for your questions. So there is one question in the comment box. Is it possible for planets to collide? Planetary collisions are pretty rare, especially in developed systems like ours. Our solar system is reasonably stable. Not perfectly so, but all the planets are not likely to hit another large object in the near future. But we are saying here is just not likely and not impossible. So thank you for that wonderful question. Now allow me to read one question again in our com comment box. 
So, says here, can we live on another planet? As we all know, Mars has always been the top candidate for a planet other than the Earth where life might, might be found. Therefore, rovers are being sent to Mars to look and explore if it is capable to be the next planet where human life can exist. But did you know that other than Mars, astronomers also look for Europa? Can you still remember Europa? It is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter as another candidate where life can sustain. But it is still under study. So I can see that comments are still coming in our comment box. Please reserve those unanswered questions to your science teacher in your follow-up discussion tomorrow. So don't forget to attend your follow-up discussion. So for your home learning task, lesson 7 of your fourth quarter module. Don't hesitate to ask questions from your science teacher. So before we end this session, let me share to you this short line from Libra. Shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you land among the stars. Keep on shooting, keep on aiming, and let us always to do our best. But if the day comes that we are not able to reach the moon in our lives, there are still stars waiting for us. Don't be so sad for not getting what we want. At least, we try. So once again, I'm Ms. Sheila Jane P. Tesorero, your Science 6 FB Live teacher, always reminding you to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay indoors. I had a very wonderful school year with you, grade 6. I hope to see you all on your moving off ceremony. So with that, see you again next week in another Science Terrific episode here in Valenzuela FB Live. Have a great day everyone! Thank you for listening!